Holy mackerel. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Holy Mackerel Moments with Harry Hart Brown, episode number... Number nine, number nine, number nine. Holy Mackerel Moments are those fascinating occurrences in everyday life that are wondrous, that we can't quite explain, that make us want to say... Holy mackerel! And I'm really glad you're here. Holy mackerel. Thank you guys for showing up. <laughs> yes, thank you. Today's featured story is Freddy the Fly. Oh, I know I look different. I have my head shaved for a movie. And no, the movie is not Dick Tracy versus Cue Ball. Cue Ball is here. Here. <laughs> Now then, more and more, I realize that life force energy comes through all life forms, connecting all and making communication possible with all. For example, I was intrigued to learn that the 2021 Oscar for Best Documentary Feature went to My Octopus Teacher. What she taught me was to feel that you part of this place, not a visitor. I was intrigued to see the dog playing piano and singing. I was intrigued to learn about the sea turtle that saved a woman from drowning, about the countless animals that have saved the lives of other animals and of people. I was amazed to read about the cats and dogs who walked thousands of miles to be with their people again and found them. And I was intrigued to see YouTube videos of bees and little spiders giving people high fives. <laughs> Should I give you a hand? Hello. There's my good girl, you bet. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for you to do, right there. Hey, Mr. Bumblebee. Thanks for the honey. High five. Uh-huh. I also want to thank everyone who has subscribed. It really helps. Thank you. And if you like these videos and want to help support the channel, I'll put a link below where donations are gratefully received. And speaking of animals, I will donate 10% of whatever comes in to the Nature of Wild Works, this amazing wildlife care center that provides quality lifetime care for animals who are unreleasable, including mountain lions, bobcats, foxes, prairie dogs, ferrets, groundhogs, possums, chinchillas, rabbits, horses, goats, owls, hawks, vultures, macaws, birds of all kinds, tortoises, snakes, reptiles of all kinds. Founder and director Molly Hogan and her amazing team also provide educational programs that teach people about coexisting safely and humanely with wildlife. I'll put the Wild Works link below. And now... J. Allen Boone was a Hollywood producer of movies in the 1920s. And these stories come from Jay's beautiful book, Kinship with All Life, available on Amazon. Before he met Freddy the Fly, he met... Strongheart the Wonder Dog. Strongheart was an actual movie dog. In fact, he was the top box office attraction in Hollywood for over three years. Strongheart really was a wonder dog of the silver screen. He was an amazing German shepherd who starred in a string of his own movies. Strongheart made many movies and was quite famous in his acting days starting in the 1920s. Once Jay had occasion to be Strongheart's caretaker while Strongheart was in town to shoot a movie. And the first time they approached Jay's little house in the Hollywood Hills, Jay unlocked the door and Strongheart nudged him aside, opened the door with his jaws, walked in, and gave himself a thorough tour of Jay's house, including opening closet doors, walking in, sniffing, backing out, and closing the door behind him. When he was quite finished, he walked up to Jay, gave him a brief dab, with his tongue on the back of Jay's hand, as if to say, I approve. 
they soon became fast friends. At the beginning of their time together, Strongheart did have a habit that annoyed Jay. He insisted on sleeping with his rear end up near the pillow by Jay's head and his head at the foot of the bed. Jay would hoist his body around and reposition him the proper way, and Strongheart always complied, although reluctantly, until finally the third or fourth night, Jay said, Look, we're living together. We need to get along. Your habit of sleeping upside down, it won't do. It needs to stop. Strongheart took Jay's pajama sleeve in his teeth and tugged him to the foot of the bed where there was a long curtain. Strongheart drew the curtain back to reveal an old pair of rickety-looking French doors, released the curtain, looked at the doors, looked at Jay, looked at the doors, looked at Jay. He had been trained as a police dog, and he had just shown Jay that the reason he slept with his head at the foot of the bed was to be close to the French doors in the event an intruder might try to enter, Strongheart would be more easily and more quickly able to fend him off. <laughs> he didn't sleep that way to annoy Jay. He did it to protect him. <laughs> Jay felt a sense of humility and gratitude. And starting that night, Jay turned the whole bed around and now they both slept with their heads close to those French doors. In the days that followed, Jay's communication with Strongheart became ever deeper and more intimate, and the thoughts between them so clear that it put him in very good stead for what was to happen years later. One morning, Jay was shaving in the bathroom mirror. He noticed a fly standing on the mirror so that the reflection showed it appeared the fly was standing on the tip of Jay's nose. And instead of shooing it away, Jay thought, okay, I wonder why that fly flew in here and landed there. He finished shaving, went down to the kitchen to make breakfast. There was another fly on the kitchen counter. He went into his living room where his desk was, where he did his writing, and th there was another fly standing on the stack of paper next to his typewriter. He said, either this house is full of flies. He went back to the bathroom, no fly, back to the kitchen, no fly, back to his desk, there was the fly on the stack of paper. He said, it's not a bunch of flies. It's one fly who seems to be following me from room to room to room like a lonesome little puppy dog. He looked at it, cautiously, slowly put his finger on the top paper, and in a friendly way thought, would you like to climb aboard? Immediately the fly flew onto his finger. He got out a magnifying glass and looked at it, and this fly just kind of marched up and down the length of his finger like it was listening to an invisible brass band. And then he stopped in the middle, looked at Jay, rubbed his arms over his head, and bobbed his head up and down. And Jay bobbed his head up and down in return. And then for no reason at all, Jay just tossed him off his finger to see what would happen. And the fly buzzed in circles over his head. Landed back on his finger. Jay tossed him again. The fly <laughs> did it again. That was their game of toss, which they played many times after that. Jay thought, I wonder if he'll let me touch him. So he slowly reached out and began. Oh. He touched the fly and it skidded to the side. Jay didn't know his own strength, but the fly righted himself immediately, apparently showing no fear. And then even more gently, Jay reached over and gently stroked its wing and then reached over to the other side and gently stroked its other wing. And that became the beginning of Jay's friendship with Freddy the Fly. At seven o'clock the next morning, Jay was shaving. There was Freddy on the mirror. There was Freddy in the kitchen for breakfast and there was Freddy by the desk. Well, Freddy would follow Jay wherever he went around the house, sometimes buzzing around his head, sometimes riding on his collar or his cuff. And one day he said, when you do that, keep doing it on the clothes. Don't do it on my face or the back of my hand because it makes me uncomfortable. 
And Freddie always did that. And Jay would be working at his desk, and Freddie would occupy himself. But when Freddie wanted attention, he knew how to get it. He'd buzz in little, cir <laughs> little circles in front of uh, Jay's nose. And then go to the paper. Jay knew it's time for a game of toss. He'd put up his finger. Freddie would fly up. And then Freddie had an artful way of inviting Jay to stroke his wings, which he was always happy to do. One night, Jay attempted to have a telepathic conversation with Freddy, so he deeply relaxed, and when the time felt right, he said, Freddy, what are you supposed to be doing in my world? Almost immediately came the response, what are you supposed to be doing in my world? Jay said, well, why is it that flies treat humans so badly? And of course, the response was, why do you humans treat flies so badly? <laughs> Touche. One day, Jay took a crayon and made a line down the middle of his palm and said to Freddy, okay, this is the game. This is your side here, and this is my side here. So when I toss you, you may only land on your side of my hand. Here we go. And he raised his fingers. Freddy flew on it. Jay tossed him in the air, and Freddy went, did it again. Freddy always landed on his side of the hand. Well, one night, very late, boom, boom, there was a knock at the door. Jay opened it. Oh, hi. It was an actor friend of his. Hi, I know it's late. I just came from a dinner party. Jay, everybody's talking about your fly. Is this true? Can I meet your fly? Jay said, oh, well, actually, um, I see Freddy uh, during the day only. He goes away at nighttime. I have no idea where he is. Aw, well, couldn't you, couldn't you get him to show up? I, I, like I say, I don't know where he is or where he goes. Why don't you come back tomorrow during the daytime? He'll probably be here. I can't come back tomorrow. I'm leaving. I have a flight for New York tomorrow morning. Jay, please try to get the fly to come out. I really want to meet him. All right, I'll try. Why don't you sit over there on the couch? Mentally, he called Freddy's name. Nothing happened for a long time. But then... Bzzz, he appeared and landed on Jay's finger. The actor went, oh my gosh, is that Freddy? Jay went, Freddie, this is a friend of mine. He'd like to meet you. Oh, the actor stood up and crossed the room, getting closer to Freddie, and said, Hey there. Freddie flew off Jay's finger up to the top of the ceiling. And the actor went, Whoa, hey, what's the matter? Hey, don't be afraid of me. I won't hurt you. Jay told you, I'm a friend of his, and now I'm a friend of yours, I hope. Come on down, say hi. I want to play with you. Come on, Freddy. I want to be your friend. Please, come on. It's okay. Come on. He tried and tried every way he could think of to coax Freddy down. Freddy wouldn't budge. The actor finally sat back on the couch and said, why doesn't he want to come play with me? Jay said, well, let me ask you something. If you were here in this room and you saw Freddy and I was not here to introduce you, what do you think you would do? Oh, if you weren't here and I saw Freddy, I'd, I'd probably try to bash the life out of him as a favor to all human beings. <laughs> Why? Jay said, you think Freddy doesn't know that? Let me tell you something about Freddy. He can see what you look like, hear what you sound like, but he can also feel your inner attitude. He knows you don't like flies. He knows you don't really care about him. And he knows that your offers of friendship are neither genuine nor sincere. To him, you're just a common assassin. He wants nothing to do with you. This was a very wealthy, extremely famous movie star who was treated by all as a very important person. And he had just been sharply humbled 
by a fly. Jay said, do you blame them? After a long silence, the actress said, no, I don't blame them. I had it coming. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Freddie. By now, Freddie was in Jay's palm getting wing strokes and the actor slowly walked toward him again, this time showing genuine interest. And Freddie whirled around, looked at him, but did not fly to the ceiling. He stayed in Jay's palm and Jay realized those two had connected. And the actor said, thank you, Freddie. You taught me a great lesson here tonight. It's something I really needed to learn. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. And he left. Jay looked at his little friend so filled with admiration and affection. And then all of a sudden, he started flying in circles over Jay's head. It was already dawn. And Freddie flew into the beams of sunlight that was streaming through the windows until he became one with the beams of light until Jay couldn't see him anymore. And that was the last time he saw Freddie. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye. Ha, 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 ha.